Beware of the blob. That's right. Beware of the blob indeed. This is Will, and this is Sci-Fi Guy, and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite movies. And I bet it's one of your favorites as well, and that is the original, the incomparable can't be beat, The Blob. So what do you say about a legend, a true legend? Um, one of those films, I remember, I guess, watching it as uh, as a kid, certainly maybe five or six uh grammar school, you know, many times, several times then in high school, college, I mean, you know, the blob, the blob has always been around us, and unlike a lot of films at the time, in terms of low budget, uh, you know, this came out in 1958, especially the low budget horror sci-fi, they were usually filmed in black and white, glorious black and white, nothing wrong, but the blob was filmed in color, gorgeous color. And this is really one of the, you know, great distinctions for a movie at that time, for a low-budget film. Now, it premiered in 1958. It was a double feature, um, a double feature with I Married a Monster from Outer Space. So with a double feature, it was kind of equal, but it was so popular, it was quickly moved up to be the main feature. Um, this is from the wiki. Audience liked it, but critics were not as kind. Here's the New York Times. Quote, unfortunately, his picture talks itself to death. That they're talking about the director. Even with the blob nibbling away at everybody in sight. And most of his trick effects under the direction of Irvin S. Yeworth look pretty phony. On the credit side, however, the camera very snugly frames the small town background. A store, a church, several homes, and a theater. The color is quite good. The blob rolls around in at least a dozen horrible-looking flavors, including raspberry. The acting is pretty terrible itself. There is not a single becomingly familiar face in the cast, headed by a young Steve McQueen and Anita Cors Corset Corso. And another review at the time, Variety said, seeing McQueen as the star gamely giving the old college try, but that the star performers, however, are the deluxe color and camera work of Thomas Spaulding and Barton Sloan's effects. So you had a movie where at the time a lot of the critics were, uh, you know, naysayers. They were non-believers, but of course it's become not only a cult movie, uh, but a franchise. It spawned uh, Son of the Blob, which really became, you know, Beware of the Blob, like the uh, catchy song, Beware of the Blob. And that that alone is another reason. We, we're, you know, how many sci-fi horror movies can boast a hit theme by, by a composer, Burt Bacharach, and... Again, that's not, not only was the was the song a catchy song, but it was composed by one of the most notable composer. From the wiki, the film's tongue-in-cheek title song, The Blob, was written by Burt Bacharach and Mac David. It became a na nationwide hit in the U.S., peaking at 33 on the Billboard chart, November 9, 1958. It was recorded by a studio group who adopted the name The Five Blobs. What's cool is um, the vocals are all by one singer, Bernie Knee, but it's overdubbed, so it sounds sort of like a chorus or a group. Now, this is uh, Steve McQueen, of course, became one of the true icons of the silver screen, one of the great Hollywood legends, and this is his third feature. The other two, he had roles, not, not exactly stars, I would say, certainly not like the hero of the blob, the one who battled the blob. So in, in many respects, it certainly is, I think, Steve McQueen's most notable first feature, even though technically it's his third. And for me, I remember as a kid and later on and into today, um, I was always, you know what? Why doesn't any other filmmakers, any producer, screenwriter sort of, you know, get that same vibe, this, this gelatinous, huge creature, this, you know, ravenous alien thing that keeps on absorbing. Now, maybe they would have, you know, copyright um, violations, uh, you 
know, plagiarism, but you look at, you know, of course, vampires and werewolves and zombies and ghosts and aliens, and you've all got, you know, all these um, wonderful legendary creatures, and the blob sort of stands on its own with the three films, the original 1958, the Beware of the Blob, the Son of the Blob, and then the remake. I believe that was, I think, the late 80s or so, maybe 1988. Yeah, I looked up the... Um, the remake from 1988 and it did pretty badly well in terms of box office budget was 10 million and it made 8.2 so it was a financial disappointment to say the least good filming certainly a good remake um but didn't deliver in terms of the uh, box office um it has a 63 percent approval on rotten tomatoes says the consensus reads the blob can't replicate the B-movie charm of the original, though its fast-paced and gory thrills pack enough of a punch to make it a worthwhile update. And I think that's yeah, the, the real um, sort of difference. The, the new one, or now the remake, or now old new one, um, it's good, but it's much darker in tone, much more conspiratorial. Whereas the original was an, a true alien invader, this was sort of a conspiratorial a, a cre a creation, or certainly a sort of a dark, uh, you know, governmental scientist creation. Um, and it goes awry, obviously. And in terms of the original box office and financial performance, the budget of the 1958 version was 110000 It made $4 million. So obviously it did quite well. Um, and again, as I was saying before, it's, it's just curious that no one has done, not so much of an official remake, but a similar... Uh, you know, theme, the thematic, you know, um, production where it's a ravenous, you know, uh, hu hungry, sort of like a galactus, you know, blobby thing that keeps on eating and absorbing. And more trivia from the wiki, um, this was inspired, the blob was inspired by a discovery of star jelly in Pennsylvania in 1950. It was originally titled The Molten Meteor. And star jelly is a gelatinous substance sometimes found on grass or even on branches of trees. According to folklore, it is deposited on the earth during meteor showers. It is, it is described as translucent or grayish-white gelatin that tends to evaporate shortly after having fallen. So that sort of strange little occurrence um, in you know real life gave the inspiration for the blob. And now this is a great bit of trivia. 28-year-old Steve McQueen received $3,000 for his starring role. He turned down an offer for a smaller upfront fee in return for a 10% share of the profits, thinking the film would never make money. He needed his signing fee immediately to pay for food and rent. However, the blob ended up hitting uh, the blob ended up a hit, grossing 4 million at the box office and 10% would be $400,000. So well, Steve, Steve McQueen obviously did, did very well later, but at that time, he could have made it a complete killing, 400000 as opposed to 3000 And the sequel, uh, first called Son of the Blob, then Beware the Blob. It was directed by Larry Hagman, J.R. himself from Dallas. The same creature from the original, this time starting as a small specimen unearthed by a bulldozer crew in the Arctic. And when they released it, I guess, as, you know, the marketing, they used the tagline, the movie that J.R. shot. And that was a play on who shot J.R. Because, of course, Dallas, with his character, his nasty, uh, hated character, J.R. was shot. So this was the movie that J.R. shot. And I'm sure fans, including myself here, of course, um, we want another one. It says a remake with the same name, uh, was directed in 88, uh, but in 2009, it was revealed uh, director Rob Zombie was working in another remake. He left the project. He was then replaced by Simon West as director in 2015. It was announced that the film would be produced by Richard Saperstein with the producer of the original film, Jack H. Harris, as executive producer. Harris died in 2017, and there have been no updates as of 2021. So that's really... Too bad. It's unfortunate because I want another blob. Uh, what's funny is that, well, there have been blobby, blobby characters in certain um, movies. In the, Hotel Trans in the Hotel Transylvania franchise, one of Dracula's friends is a huge, indestructible, green, am amoeba amoeboid creature called Blobby, who is able to absorb and re regurgitate anything in his path. So, 
we did have that, but not a real uh, blob except for the 1988 remake. The town of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, one of the filming locations, has held an annual blob fest every year, including a reenactment of the scene where moviegoers run screaming from the town's colonial theater, which has been restored. So that would be fun. Uh, actually, I think a friend of mine was telling you about that. He lives in the area, and he, he goes every year. So there we go. We want another blob. Is it coming? We can still enjoy the original, but certainly I'd like another one. How about you? I want to thank you guys for listening. As usual, if you do not subscribe, you, sh you can do so. You should do so. Either the freebie or the paid people, which is only $4.99. You get some nice extras. Either or. Keep on sending us some nice feedback. And go watch The Blob. Beware of The Blob. It creeps. It creeps.